I am Colin from Time Valley Motorhomes and behind me is the Malibu 640 LE RV GT Charming Family of 4 and this is the handover of the vehicle. So the previous customer of this vehicle fitted a gas tank, so it's a refillable gas tank instead of opposed to having a bottle. So to check your levels of your gas when you start the engine, it will come up here. And with this vehicle, it is keyless, so when you look, the key doesn't go in there, just press the button. When doing close proximity of the vehicle, so there's the keys there. Make sure you press the brake, it's just because the steps out, it's beeping. And you do it with press and do the level of gas in the tank. Also, with it being keyless, the keys in your pocket. And as long as all the doors are shut, you can press here and lock it, and press here and unlock it without even having to bring the keys out of your hands. So, if you've got your cord on and you've got your hands full, you can press the buttons on the doors. door step you have to retract it before you start the engine otherwise you'll get what we've just had and it'll just beep and then as soon as the engine's off you'll be able to put the step back out fly screen so always use two hands to assist the fly screen across the sliding door area and then back. Here is your dirty water, so this is your waste. So when you leave your site, just crank that open and you'll see it's coming out there. And that will allow the water out. Don't drive around with the added weight of waste water because it's just going to use more diesel and it's going to impact, impact how much weight you can put on board the vehicle. And in the winter, just make sure it's left open so that the water doesn't freeze because if it does freeze, it could damage the tanks or the pipework of the vehicle. Next week, you have your gas fill-up point. So go to your local LPG centre. So you can have a, you can get an app now and download it and find where your local LPG station is near to you. It's more widely available on the continent. You're connected to being at fitting, so it's like a circular end. Connects, you twist it on and you would pull the trigger back. Once you pull the trigger back, it pressurises the fitting to the vehicle, so then you can press and hold the button on the pump until simply it stops filling. Once it stops filling, that's when you know it's full. And then just remember to pop your cover back on to protect the fitting. To fill the water up, which is your fresh water, so your fresh water tank situated here on board the vehicle. Using the Malibu key, you've got a lockable fresh water cap. And what you need to do is you need to put the flat end of the hose into here connect the other end of the hose so buy some hose fittings and connect it at the tap because it's mainly just a brass tap on your site connect it turn it on and fill it fill it until you look on the control panel and think right that's enough water or it overflows if it's overflowing it's doing no harm it just means it's full if you're filling it and it is overflowing and you're getting a little bit of water out underneath the vehicle as well it's just because it's an overflow from the tank. If the water is consistently pouring out the vehicle from underneath it, maybe because the boiler is open and you've got the pump on. Also, fitted as an extra, not standard. We fitted this to the last owner's request on the vehicle when he bought a brand new. This is an external gas point. So instead of carrying a separate bottle to use your Kadak outside when it's nice weather to do some cooking, it uses a gas tank on board the vehicle. So you connect with a bullfinch connection, which is a red connector. You'll need two Jubilee clips to connect either side of the fitting and the barbecue, followed by a length of gas orange hosen. And then you'll be able to connect and use the gas tank on board the vehicle instead of carrying a spare bottle. Coming around at the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light reversing camera you'll notice as well you've got a 5g aerial that is a 5g my file system which again was an extra it doesn't come as standard i'll get into more about that inside the vehicle 
but you do have your parking sensors on the back as well opening the back doors so as we've talked about the fresh water if you just get on here and lift this mattress out the way and open this section here this is your onboard fresh water tank you get access to the tank here but more importantly just in this corner this is how you drain your fresh water tank off so this sticker here which will pop there for now tells you how to open it so it's turns so if you open it three quarters of the way it will take out all the water bar 20 liters so you can see there it's leaving a little bit of water that's 20 liters left in the tank which will allow you to travel and use your toilet and stop and have a cup of tea on a longer journey so you're not carrying a full tank of water around with you where not necessary but if you wanted to drain it all off just get a hold of it turn it turn it all away if you look outside the water's pouring out underneath the van so in the winter you want to make sure this that this is fully left open so no water can freeze in this tank or if you've taken on a source of contaminated water or you're simply just not using it for a couple of weeks just let the water out because it's going to become stagnant we never advise drinking that water unless you're boiling it use bottled water for cold water because you don't know where you're topping up from you could have a good source of water at home but then as soon as you start touring and topping up from other places you don't know where the water's coming from in here would have been your gas locker if it did have gas bottles on but because this vehicle's got a gas tank on we've used the space so the storage so you've got your hose for your external shower point which is just here so this has been fitted by us as well we just take that off push the hose on on the other end of the hose is the trigger gun it's cold water feed so you can hose the bikes off the dogs the boots if you've been on a long walk you pull a mud fitting for your external barbecue point full finch end which goes on the van and that goes on your cutter that's there as well and you've got gas taps here which will be for one will be for the barbecue point and the other will be for the main tank so you can close it off here if you're boarding a ferry or anything you can close the gas tank off so that the tap closes and doesn't allow the gas from the tank to the vehicle but make sure they're on when you are using your gas system in here as well you've got a false floor so you can lift that up false floor in there all the riding handles stored there as well so you've got a storage space coming down the passenger side of the vehicle you've got your flue for your boiler so your boiler is situated in that unit there at the back in one of the cupboards which we'll get onto later on in the video how to drain the boiler down. Mains connection, so to connect with the mains, you get your hook blade, you lift the collar and you slide it onto the vehicle first. Always hook the vehicle first, then the site and do it in reverse order when walking, just for the solely reason of not walking around the line. This is your cassette toilet. So your cassette toilet, your toilet is a hideaway toilet. It needs to be in the right position for the cassette to come out. If it's not, the cassette won't line up with this locker and you'll not be able to get it out. But to get it out, line the cassette up, lift the handle. But make sure the blade's closed because if the blade's not closed, you'll have the problem I'm having now where the cassette won't come out. So the blade needs to be making sure the blade's closed, which it is now. Grab a hold of the orange handle, lift it up and slide the cassette out of the van. When it's full, it'll indicate you can either carry it, the handle, or you can pull the handle up and use the wheels and drag it to your waste disposal point. This point is normally beside your toilet block and shower block on site. And then to empty, unscrew the grey cap and pop the grey cap to the side for a moment because you don't need that. 
So I'd have pulled the cassette out, but as you start to pull, press this orange button at the top of the cassette. It allows a bit of air in, stops it glugging and lets it pour consistently. Once you've poured it out, the waste, there's normally a tap to put some water in. Just give it a rinse, tip out again before going in with a cap full of chemical. So this cap is 120 ml. You can fill that with green or blue chemical, depending on what the site wants. Ask the site when you book in what they prefer and you'll be able to take the right chemical with you because now they are wanting green instead of blue because it's more environmentally friendly. One cap of chemical into here and it's good to go back into the bag. Using the tablets, just a pint of water and then a tablet, which you can pop down the toilet in the cellophane wrapper straight into the set. Just there, you get the store in a smaller bag like this. So it's up to you what to use. Put it in the passenger door. <coughs> so the passenger door, you do have your diesel. So you'll, you'll want to know how to open the diesel. You think, well, how do I open the diesel with a smart key? You can either carry the spare key with you, like so, or click here and bring out the blade on the key. And that goes into the fuel cap, and you'll be able to turn it and remove the lockable fuel cap. Fill that with diesel underneath because it's a new diesel engine, it's Ad Blue. And on these feed the cattles are 19 litres of Ad Blue from empty. Ad Blue you can buy on the pump for as little as £1.10 a litre, or you can buy it in the drums. Drums are 5 or 10 litres, you might want to keep one on board, or like I said, it's just as easy to pull up to the pump when you're putting fuel in if the light comes on and fill the Ad Blue up. Take the cap off, pop the end in, and wait until it overflows. You know. When it's overflowing, just stop it full. It does come up with it being the, on the new Fiat Series 8, it comes up with a warning now of you can actually view your levels of Ad Blue. So before you trip, when you're setting the van up, you might just want to think, oh, do I need Ad Blue or not? Just check your levels. If it says it's full, it's full. Five and a half thousand mile on a full tank of Ad Blue. Normally, when you've covered 4,000 mile and you've got 1,500 miles left, that's when you'll get your warning. Opening the door, you've got your tyre pressure, so 5.5 bar, which is 79.5 psi, and the tyre size there. Underneath this seat is your electric block unit, so this has got all your 12 volt fuses on. So, to check a 12 volt fuse, in the middle that's intact, if that was blown, the fuse needs changed. So if there's something not working on 12 volt, check the fuse. There's normally going to be a fuse, so it's dead easy. Fuses are here, carry some spares. If you need to change them, pull them out, check it, and pop a new fuse in to the same armage. Le Engine battery is underneath the carb floor on the Decato, so this panel lifts up and you'll be able to get the battery out if you ever need to change it in years to come or you want to put a charger on it when charging it over the winter. Bonnet release is here. So on these new Fiat Decatos, there's, new, there's no oil dipstick for checking the levels. And there is no power steering fluid. So the fluids you do have under here is your screw wash. Three tabs lift this cover off and you've got your coolant and your brake fluid. Oil filler is here. Paint cord is on the sticker. And then a give or receive a jump start, you'd earth here, so a black clip onto there, red clip, air filter, lift this up, this goes into your fuse box for your cab, this is your positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start. Once on board the vehicle, to operate your Malibu control panel, which is a 12 volt control panel, this is your on and off button. This indicates if you're hooked up to mains. If that light's on, you're hooked up. If it's not on, you're just off your 12 volt leisure battery, which means it would be wild camping. So you'd have to run everything off 12 volt and gas. No mains would work, but we are hooked up, so our mains connection would work. So if I plugged anything in three pin plug wise, it would have power to it. If you wanted the radio on, or you wanted your music on when you're on site, you can press the music icon. And what that'll do is, it'll send power to the head unit at the front of the cab, which means you can have that on and it'll use the power 
from the leisure battery but you also need that on if you've got a tele fitted to the vehicle for the 12 volt point coming down this side starting off from the top you've got your leisure battery reading take the hook about to get a true reading of the leisure battery then you've got your fresh water reading 50 percent and underneath that you've got your waste the waste isn't lighting up because i've drained it off from outside which you've seen in the previous clip of the walk around of the outside of the vehicle so if there was any waste on that would indicate in 25 70 75 or 100 percent increments and then at the bottom you do have your vehicle battery which is the fiat battery you can view the level of that from here so your heating and hot water is controlled by the truma inet ready control panel so i'm going to insert a clip of how to use this after showing you what this is so this is a lithium battery reading system so this is fitted with lithium batteries which last a little bit longer than lead acid and they don't drain as quick so if you press here you can wake the panel up and you can view the levels of your leisure battery so you can see there that it's 86 percent charged and the current coming in so there's 8.3 amps current and there's 13.5 volts of the battery which is your voltage here take the hook about to get a true reflection of the battery and it'll tell you where it's at but it's telling you there that's two hours time the battery will be fully charged the benefit over lithium over the lead acid is it lasts a little bit longer uh, and it's a lighter battery so lithium is the way forward in motorhomes and this is just a lithium charger so you can just and you can see there that it's charging yep. so your fedford fridge is a 12 volt compressor fridge with a squeeze box there so when not using it always leave the door open because it's got a seal on here a rubber seal that fits snug to the frame of the fridge and it would trap the air in and cause it to make the motorhome smell and mold would start growing in the fridge over time if that door was left shut when not in use so you can little blue clip pop that in the middle rest the door upon it don't shut the door with any force and the door will stay loose and allow air to go in and out to operate you've got an on off button here on the left press and hold and you'll be able to turn it on temperature you've got one being the warmest and five being the coldest so in the summer you may have to have it on five just because of the heat outside and it keep the fridge performing but when you are starting off from scratch so what i would do is if you're lucky enough to keep this at home i'd park it on the drive a couple of days beforehand even if you can't if you can get it home great park it on the drive a couple of days beforehand and hook it up it'll charge your batteries but put your fridge on and allow it to chill the day before go off in the car bring the shopping home and put the shopping in the fridge turn it from five to maybe four or three just because sometimes it can be too strong should you need to change it just press and hold until it starts flashing so press and hold the fifth bar until it starts flashing and then you can turn it down by just scrolling up and down the scale this will stop the shopping from freezing if it's too warm and in the winter you may have to turn it down to even either one or two because it might be too strong when you arrive on your site and you're going to bed um, you've got a nighttime mode so you can hit the moon here and what that does is it reduces the performance of the fridge so should it be on five which will be working at its full performance you can turn the nighttime mode on and it'll just mean it lowers the decibels of the fridge but that's only if it's on full temperature if it's on anything lower the nighttime mode won't work because the fridge isn't working to its full performance but like i say turn it off when you not use it leave the door open once in a while give it a wipe out with some antibacterial wipes if you put it away for winter just so that it's nice and clean and leave the door open so that it doesn't 
smells don't form and you don't come back to the motor home and the fridge be full of mold and it absolutely stink in here. So cooking facilities in the vehicle, you have a two burner gas hob. Does tell you the max size there, so 180 mil pan on there, 150 mil pan on there. Don't do anything bigger than that because you're just gonna put loads of pressure on the burner and it isn't gonna heat the pan quick enough. So that's your medium ring and this is your small ring. Once you've had it on, just allow it to cool down before you put the Dometic glass hob down because otherwise you will shatter this if it is too warm. So what I would do is just leave it until it's warm enough to put your hand on. If you can put your hand on it and leave it there, you can put the glass lid down. Press the catch in the centre of the handle, you'll be able to unlock the handle and you do have storage up here. Followed by storage in the kitchen, in the drawers. Storage on both sides. This being the kitchen, this being your wardrobe, so there's a hanging reel in there so you can hang in there. And you've got storage in here as well. Two 230 volt sockets, so these will only work when you're hooked up to mains and you'll be able to plug in a kettle or a toaster. And then making sure that you do have enough water on board. All your taps, you don't have to turn the pump on on the panel because there isn't a pump on the panel. It's automatically wired to the tap. So the tap's got an inbuilt micro switch. So making sure that you've got enough water, as soon as you open the tap, you're going to get a pressurized flow from the cold side. and the hot side so this water there is getting up the temperature so your hot water system is working and you've got your sink cover which you can use as a chopping board so that just goes in there gives you a bit of extra worktop space if you're serving up or you're using the hob you can use your chopping board on here so in the back bedroom of the vehicle you've got two single beds or if you're small enough you can use it as a double across the width of the van lift this section up and you've got some more wardrobe space a large hanging space for wardrobe so you can get from the top or you can get to it from here as well what i would do is there's custom made mattress covers that you can get from Duvalier or other places that will do them for motorhomes get them so you just measure your sections of bed especially this section because you wouldn't want a fixed sheet on there to lift this up to get your wardrobe so we'll get a custom made mattress covers and then you can just have your duvets on top so that's your bedroom with porthole windows with a fly with a black and blind and a fly screen as they are you can open these windows so you've got a fly screen to keep the unwanted guests out as well. Lights in the bedroom are here and here you've got two individual reading lights which are rocker switches are just up there. If you if you're using the van to haul a bike or you've gone to pick some furniture up from IKEA and you want to use the back of the vehicle. You can lift the, take the mattresses off and you can lift the bed frames up. These straps hold the bed frames up so you can utilize the space for your larger items that you want to carry. And that you've got the same this side as well. In here, you've got a couple of different add-ons which we've put on as well. So first of all, you've got a fixed TV aerial, which is a Maxview Gazelle. So you've got a booster here, so you can boost the signal on the black wheel. Should it be too strong, turn it down if it's pixelating. If it's pixelating and it's at its lowest point, try turning it up so it steadies the picture out. You've also got a 5G Pro My Wi-Fi Wi-Fi system. So there's an aerial on the roof, which we've seen from outside, which sits about here. That aerial picks up 10 times the signal that your phone could ever pick up. So your inbuilt phone aerial, that's 10 times stronger. 
but you need a data only SIM card in this device which you can put in at the top which is similar like an iPhone you need a little pin just goes in the top there and you put a SIM card in these two are connections to the aerial on the hot on the hub so this is a dock magnetic connects to there two aerials come in from the roof and a power cable turn it on there's a little button here which turns it on and it'll go through its cycle so once it's turned itself on you get this screen here it tells you your data used and the wi-fi and it'll tell you how many devices are also connected to it as well so you can connect this to the wi-fi if you want so it doesn't use your data off the sim but the aerial will help um, pick up the signal so if you're on a site that's got a wi-fi connection um, and you know the password just go to wi-fi and you can connect to their wi-fi and just use the signal or you can just use the sim that's in the van and you can see how many connected devices you've got on you can, that's your network name so you've got 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz being the bigger and um, faster internet connection just depending on normally the 2.4 you can get anywhere sometimes the 5 depending on the strength of signal that it's picking up will determine whether you use that or you use the 2.4 your connected list, like I said, your sleep modes, 10 minutes, and your max Wi-Fi. So you can connect up to 32 devices to this. Which you're never going to have 32 devices, but you might. You can update it. Check for updates automatically on, so it will just update itself. Your data usage, like I say, if you've got your SIM in there, you can see how much data you've used and how much data you've got left. But I always like to get an unlimited plan on one of these because if you're using it, depending on what you're using it for, if you're using it for a lot of streaming Netflix and iPlayer and catch up channels, um, that'll take a lot of data. If you're using it just for scrolling through Facebook and social media or uh, the internet, you can take a, a lower monthly gigabyte plan. But like I say, just connect your data. Your devices to it the password is on the back of it so if you want the password you can get the password off the back and in the settings to connect to the 5g pro wi-fi system so this is your avtex television which is a smart telly so it has inbuilt Amazon Prime and Netflix so you can connect that to the Wi-Fi system as well as long as there's a data only SIM card in and that'll pick up a signal there's a booklet in the box here with a password and everything on for the Wi-Fi which helps you connect this to the Wi-Fi system this telly is stored away if you lift this little clip here above the TV this here so if you lift that up you'll be able to slide it out before turning the telly all the way around so you can watch it in bed should you wish or you can watch it in the front if you want to use the captain seats but this telly needs retuned every time you move location because it's going to pick up a different signal from a mass and to do so on the remote if you hit the, the spanner cog here that's your settings click that scroll all the way down to all settings press enter Programs, program tuning and settings. Auto tune, antenna, because you, you haven't got a cable, and you haven't got a satellite on the vehicle, so it's only an antenna from the aerial at the back. Click next, click next again, and it'll search. It'll go very fast and you'll think, oh, it's not gonna pick anything up till it gets to about, 35, 40% and then it'll slow down and bring in all the channels. So there it's slowed down at 28% and it started to pick up 15 channels. So it's slowly picking up channels and that is how to retune the TV. So in the washroom, so first of all, we'll talk about the door. So the door, you can either have it as the bathroom door 
Which would? Work like so. Or. You can have it so it's like a dressing room door and a bath and the bedroom door. So this would fold over to so. On here, there's a cable in the middle. Pull it out. So pull it out and you'll be able to slide that in. It just means getting in and out from here to the back beds is so much easier than having this here and you're having to scoop yourself around. And it means if you're getting ready and you're using the wardrobe and you're using it in here for your toiletries and things, it's a lot easier. So using the toilet, as I said from outside, the toilet can be positioned in three different positions. So it can be tucked away, which gives you, so you can tuck it away like it is there and, it, and you can put the board down, which just keeps the splash from the shower off the toilet. So no water sits on top of the toilet when showering. When you're using it, you can bring it out into position. And then the ball spins round so you can get comfy. And when you're emptying it, it needs to go in position B. So like that. So that the back of it's square on with the toilet cassette door. But when you're using it, there's a little button here, so flush, once you've flushed, open the blade, which is this grey handle here, use the toilet, flush after use, and close it back. Always close it back after you've used it, because then when the cassette indicates it's full, which it does on the light here, so there's a few green lights which will come up here to indicate that it's full, you'll be able to Pull the cassette out the side of the van, empty it, replenish it with chemical and put it back away. So with this being a family of four vehicle, it does have the added addition of the pop top. So place your ladder on it, once you've placed the ladder on it, turn these buckles horizontal so that the ladder does not vertical should I say so that the ladder does not jump off can't jump off and then to get it off you just turn them horizontal and you'll be able to lift it off your pop top's got a double bed up there it's got a light switch on the ceiling with two spotlights built in for lights and you pull it down which is the same way of putting it back up get hold of the handles pull it down it's always best that you have a door open to release the pressure in here because if not it can mean that pulling it is quite heavy you want the air pressure not as strong and it's but when you're pulling it down just pull the canvas in on both sides front back and the sides pull it so far down and you just want to make sure that all the canvas is in the vehicle You'll have a lot of excess of so just roll it up before bringing it down. And once you've brought it down, you can put the catches on. So it's a butterfly clip, so make sure it's fully extended. Pull it and it'll clip onto the bar. And you want that on both sides. So pull it and make sure it's on the bar there before turning the clip on itself and pushing it back. So on the bar, full turn, push back, clip it on. Safety seat belt on for a precaution. So it's just a second precaution on the safety seat belt that it is all fixed down. Then just have a quick look outside to make sure all the canvas is tucked in and nothing's hanging out before you can set off. So on the front of the canvas, when you've got the roof down, there's two Velcro straps. So if you roll it up, 
nice and safely and neatly and just clip it up it just means that it's not hanging down and it looks all clean and professional when you're traveling and it's not going to get caught with anything when it's all tied back so in the locker underneath the rear beds this is your boiler here so your boiler does two jobs it obviously provides the vehicle with air blow and heating and it also heats up 10 litres of water at any one time. So it's automatically fed via the taps from the freshwater tank to the boiler as soon as you open the tap. It pressurises the system. It's very important that in the winter you allow the water out of here because if not, water will freeze in here and will cause damage which isn't covered under a warranty as it's your responsibility for the system to be drained down. So here is a anti-frost Truma valve. And what that does is when it detects three degrees, the button at the bottom, which is flush at the moment, will pop out the blue button. That will allow the water to drain fully out underneath the vehicle. And it will only do that when the vehicle's not in use. But what I would do is physically check on it or manually drain it down yourself in case this valve ever becomes faulty. And what you need to do is blue diamond on the top, turn it, button pops out and it allows the water straight out underneath the van. To stop it, turn the diamond and push the button in at the bottom and this will stop this from happening and it will close the valve. The valve needs to be closed to refill the boiler with water otherwise the water will just drain directly out underneath the van. Just if the button doesn't stay in for any what reason more so when you're using it in the winter when it's cold try just putting the heating on by itself first warming the area up and then pushing the button in and it should stay in once you've opened the valve open all the taps within the van make sure you freshen your waste drained and leave your taps open just to allow any water that's in there to drain out also there's a little valve here this is your hot water line just lift that up and it drains off the hot water the the water in the lines of the hot water system out underneath the van as well to stop the water from freezing in the pipes your mains electric trips are also underneath the bed as well so if you trip the vehicle out try here before you try your main site and if you think you're not receiving power the best way to trek is by tripping the van if the van trips you've got power on if it doesn't trip unfortunately you're not receiving power and then finally just when we've got these bars here make sure the bars go in just to bear the weight when the beds are down there's a bar to go in the front and the back just so it evenly distributes the weight across the vehicle so now in the cab so we've got the vehicle running permanent rear view camera on the back of the van so we've added this when the van was new from the previous customer so it's a permanent rear view camera along with when you pop the vehicle in reverse the sensors come on and the factory fitted sensor so you can see there that you've got in the middle of the digital control panel um, on the dash the digital dash you do have the sensor so it's telling you it's giving you a warning of a yellow that you are approaching something behind and then your sensors will go off as well there you are because we've got the fence behind us it's telling you in the top corner your fuel range of 346 mile because your fuel's up here your temperature is up this side and you've got your mileage in the middle with your time and your temperature digital speedometer on the new Fiat series a which is great so it's not it's more car like than commercial like it's been for years you can scroll through your trips your driver assistance vehicle information so if you go to vehicle information with the left and right arrows and then you use up and down you can view the coolant temperature obviously it's cold at the minute because i've just started the engine the tire pressures so it's got tire pressure monitoring system on this vehicle your service your ad blue so it's 100 percent full of ad blue your battery charge your oil life and your oil temperature and your oil level but remember just because it says that it's 29,000 before it's first service it's not with a motorhome and needs to be serviced every year because 29,000 that can be done in six months on a commercial vehicle that's on the road 24 7 whereas 
this is a motorhome it's going to be lucky to cover five six thousand mile a year but we still recommend to keep your warranties up that it has a oil and filter service one year followed by a full service the next so that's your dash if you keep scrolling along you can get your media through the dash as well so you can view the radio channel the media um, that you listen to on your phone dab station sat nav as well on there so you can, don't have to even look at the screen you can just keep driving and look straight ahead and any alerts so if you get an engine warning light an ad blue light an oil light it would come on there tire pressure light would come on there as well so that is the dash gauge for the gas is down there a front and rear fog light so if you hit them once you get the front if you hit them twice you get the back press it again turns the lot off headlight adjustment and your stop start if you want that to turn off you can turn that off but that'll only work if the battery has sufficient charge in it so if it's been stood for a, couple, a month or a couple of weeks don't expect the stop start to work straight away you'll have to drive it to get the battery charge up of the vehicle for it to work mirror adjustment electric windows you do have electronic folding mirrors as well so you just press and fold in press to bring them out there you are handbrake is down here so it's down at the right of the driver not the left like a car in the middle you have the new uconnect head unit so the new connect head unit is a brilliant system very big screen very good for a motor home on a commercial vehicle so you've got a home so you click home can view the media FM DAB 118 being your stations 18 presets so if you've got 18 stations you like you can save 18 of your favorite stations or you can just browse them You've got all your DAB stations there, so you can pick up the ones you want, all your favourites, and you can save them as a preset. You can see what's playing, and you can also change your audio settings. Comfort is your climate control, so it can all be controlled through here, or it all can be controlled through the screen. So you can view where you, where it's going, face, feet, or screen, being the distribution of the air. Max aircon turn your aircon on and off max demist and your rear screen which is also your heated mirrors so you can turn it on here or you can turn it on there but it's up to you how you do it that'll just clear your electronic wing mirrors this is your temperature which you can change here this is your temperature this is your fan on and off recirculation aircon distribution max ac max demist or auto so it'll be done through there or through the screen it's entirely up to you and that obviously being the fan speed sat nav is absolutely brilliant on this so it's a very good improvement from its previous fiat u connect unit so sat nav built in like I say, it's you connect its fate. You can search the postcode, the name, or the address of where you want to go. You can see your local fuel stations if you run out of fuel, restaurants, everything like that through this system. And obviously, you can see you can just put a map on and see where you're going, which you can scroll in. So if you wanted to see which road you were heading for can you can see we're on the 692 there this is also European ready so you don't need to change anything if you're going to France so in this country we have postcodes abroad they have coordinates they're all ready for a coordinate to be put in so you don't need to change anything like the previous model where you start to change the flag from UK to the country you're in it's already programmed phone so you can connect your phone so add a device find you connect by searching for it 
wireless CarPlay as well. So if you've got an iPhone or if you have um, Samsung and you have a Android Auto, it's fully wireless. You don't have to connect to it and it'll bring up your phone. So it's great for an iPhone because you can just connect or bring it up. You've got all your music, all your contacts, your phone sat nav. You can download apps such as TomTom Go, Waves, Google Maps. You can use them for your sat nav instead of the one in the van, but it's up to you. Vehicle. So you can do your trips. All in there. On the phone as well, you can have two active phones. So if there's two passengers, you can have both phones connected. And whichever phone rings, it'll come through, which is quite good for a for a um, commercial vehicle. Apps, obviously, device manager, Bluetooth, DAB, FM, EM, media, USB one, which is a USB would be here. And the ones on the dash there for charging. Go to settings and if you go down to navigation, navigation routing, vehicle dimensions, you pop your dimensions in there so you can calibrate it for this vehicle. So all of these units you can calibrate for the vehicle. So depending on if you're a coach built, a panel van, um, you can change it to suit so it will take you down roads suitable for you instead of just taking you under low bridges or tight narrow lanes and if it does take you it will warn you you've got all the other settings So that's all your settings for the radio, 